How did we get here, you might ask? Here's the worst travel story you've ever heard, how we are ghosted by Egypt Air, spent two days in an airport, made 300 new friends on WhatsApp, and how there is no record that it ever happened. We are on a direct flight from Washington, D.C. to Cairo. We show up three hours early, we check our bags, we go to the lounge, and we start having a few glasses of wine. One of the attendants in the lounge comes up and tells us that our flight is 12 hours delayed. Now, this is traveling in 2023. We understand. Things happen. Now, looking back, there were some red flags at this time that we definitely should have noticed, but we were a bottle and a half of wine deep, so we just didn't. A 12-hour delay means we take off at 2 a.m. So our flight disappears from the board. It doesn't get moved to 2 a.m. It just disappears. Um, our flight also disappears from the Egypt Air website. You type our flight and our flight number in, no flight found. So I am with my best friend. We are actually headed out on a girl's trip. We decide to grab a hotel and get a few hours of sleep. We are very obedient people, and we follow direction exceptionally well. So we do show back up at the airport at 2 a.m. Now it's 2 a.m. We are wandering the Dulles Airport. There's nobody at the check-in counter, so we go through security. At our gate, we meet up with about half of the passengers on our flight. Where is the other half? I don't know. They obviously have information that we do not have. There have been no calls, no texts, no emails. And like I said, the flight has just disappeared from the website. So now it's 4 a.m. We have slept in the chapel for a few hours. We decide to go back to the hotel because it's very clear this flight is not taking off tonight. We decide to go back to the airport at 7 a.m. Why 7 a.m.? We have absolutely no idea. There have been absolutely no updates. It's just a random time that we chose. Near the check-in counter, which this check-in counter no longer belongs to Egypt Air, it now belongs to a different airline, we meet up with a lot of the passengers on our flight, who we now recognize. At this point, we find out that there has been a WhatsApp group created amongst the passengers. So we obviously invite our way into that and find out that the passengers that were flying first class were set up with a hotel through Egypt Air. That hotel concierge was getting calls from Egypt Air with updates. Hence, why only half of the flight showed up in the middle of the night because the other half were in this WhatsApp thread and found out that we were not going to be taking off that night. Why did they not send an email or update the online information? Well, we'll get to that part of the story. Now, at this point, as passengers, we decide to divide and conquer. A third of us are gonna stay at the hotel, a third of us are gonna stay before security, and a third of us are going to go through security and try to find somebody. And this is when we learn that there is not actually an Egypt Air employee in the airport at that time. Now airport management is getting involved because why on earth are 300 passengers just roaming? So an Egypt Air employee comes to the airport and says that we will get another update at midnight. That is 36 hours after we were supposed to take off. And we're not taking off, it's just an update. This is when you see the video that I posted at the very beginning. Everyone is just screaming, we are rioting, but at the end of the day, all I wanted were my bags back. They were refusing to unload the plane. I did not have an extra pair of underwear in my carry-on. I had nothing in my carry-on except makeup. I'd been living in the same clothing. I just want my bag back. And that's what everyone wants. These are some screenshots from the lovely WhatsApp chat. Do we have any confirmed news so far? Is anyone getting the bag? Is there a flight happening? Do we have any idea? Because no, we've gotten absolutely no updates. There is no one from Egypt Air in the airport. Not one person, not one employee, not a, not a pilot, n nobody. Now, after everyone was screaming and yelling at the gate, she said she was going to talk to the engineering crew and get us an update at 2 p.m. This was our 2 p.m. update. They do not have an update and they do not know when they will have an update. That's a great update. My friend and I opted to be through security so that we could partake in the lounge wine. And so I was just, you know, I was just stirring a pot. So at this point, somebody comes out and says that they're going to handwrite individual bag tag numbers down to pull bags out of the plane for passengers who want them. We wait seven hours, 15 bags come out. My friends come out. Mine does not. It is now midnight. We are leaving the airport completely defeated, wondering if we are ever actually going to take off. And a woman starts ch chasing us like down the street, says, are you on the Egypt Air flight? I recognize her. She's on the flight. I recognize her because now we are all friends. Uh, I say, yes, we are on this flight. She goes, we are taking off at noon tomorrow. Where did you get this information, ma'am? She goes, well, I work for Frontier, so I have access to like some back-end information, and we have a flight path. For the first time ever, we have a flight path. So I immediately update our 300 new friends on WhatsApp that we are taking off at noon. Did we ever get an email call, text, anything from Egypt Air? Absolutely not. But we all show up the next morning at 8 a.m. to check in. We are very pleased to see that there's an entire check-in desk waiting for us. How they knew we were going to show up, I do not know. So we check in, we get our boarding pass, we go down the stairs to TSA and we see all the people who have checked in before us waiting to get through security and everyone is screaming at each other. Egypt Air printed the wrong date on our boarding pass. It was backdated two days ago and TSA says you cannot enter security with a boarding pass from two days ago. Egypt Air, TSA, 
fight it out. They eventually put a star on our boarding pass and that is what allows us to go through. Now we get on the plane. We end up being an additional two hours delayed. So at this point we are 50, five zero hours delayed from our original departure. However, we take off. You think that's where the story ends, but you would be wrong. The entire time we are in the airport, we are getting updates like this. Welcome, you have arrived. We had not taken off at this point. Even third party tracking apps are saying that we have landed. Landed over two days ago. This is while we were still in Washington, DC. So now everyone is filing for reimbursement through travel insurance for like the hotels, food, et cetera. And some people didn't even take the flight. So they're just requesting a refund. But there is no record that this flight took off late. Our boarding passes were backdated. We never got anything via email. The flight disappeared from the website. Everything that we learned was through a random WhatsApp chat that was created or through a hotel concierge or a random Frontier employee. So nobody can get any money back. But I will say there is one positive thing to come out of this trip. All of my new WhatsApp friends. Everyone is inviting us to celebrations. Everyone is asking to send pictures of their family vacations. And while I would never fly Egypt Air again, I think this sums it up perfectly. It wasn't about the trip, but the friends you made along the way.